Hi beautiful, look who's finally here. My hourglass palettes have finally arrived. I cannot wait to play with both of these. I want to show you swatches and of course I'm going to be putting them on my face today which is why I look super super pale right now. These right here are hourglasses biggest release every year. People go crazy for them and I get it to a certain extent. I'm not hourglass palette crazy. Do I like them? Yes. Do I enjoy them? Yes. Are they my ultimate most favorite face product ever? Not necessarily and we'll get into why. So if you're excited for today's video don't forget to please give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. As you can see I grabbed two out of the three palettes that they launched. I grabbed the ones that had the most new shades which are the Jellyfish palette and the Snake palette. There is also the Leopard palette in the middle. I'll put a picture right here for you. And this one only had one new shade and it was a blush. So I wanted to experience the ones that had the most new shades and show you these. Besides that, they raised the price on these palettes again. They used to be $80 back in the day. I think last year's palettes were $85 and these are $90. And I did purchase these myself, of course, so I don't know, three just felt like a lot. Two, I feel like I can do, hopefully, hopefully this video gets views, we'll see. Anyways, let me show you the boxes and let me show you what the inside of these palettes look like, starting with the Jellyfish palette, which I think out of the two that I'm reviewing today, this is probably going to be the one that is most suited to my skin tone. So here you have the outside box of the Jellyfish palette. These palettes have a 12 month shelf life and they are made in Italy. I will say, I've had some of my hourglass palettes like these for like three to four years and they perform just like they did on day one. So take a look right here at the outside of the Jellyfish palette. This is definitely the one that had the best packaging in my opinion. Now they did launch four cases and three palette color stories. So they made their palettes customizable just like they did last year. Here is the four cases that you can choose from. I was dying for the owl one, <laughs> but I ended up not getting it because it would be confusing to um, refer to a palette as something and the case be different for like review purposes. The owl case though I thought was beautiful. Anyways, you at home can customize your palette inside the case that you like most. So you can get the inside of the jellyfish palette and put it inside owl or put it inside the other cases and whatnot. Since we're talking about the inside of the jellyfish palette already, take a look right here. At what the inside of this one looks like. The Jellyfish palette has three new shades and three already existing shades. So this one here, the first one is Diffuse Light and this is an already existing shade. This has been part of their line forever and it's this beautiful light blurring powder. Rose Diffusion is a blush right here in the middle. This is one of the new shades. Take a look right here at what it looks like. It's like a beautiful mauvey pinky type blush. This next one here is also a new shade. This one is called Opal Strobe Light and it's like a highlighty type shade. I will say my biggest cons with the Hourglass palettes, besides the fact that they're very pricey, I think that the formula is phenomenal. You're not going to find a cheaper palette with a better quality. That's not going to happen. I think the price is justified. However, it is still expensive, right? So besides that, the other thing that usually throws me off about Hourglass is that they make their blushes very glowy and I have textured skin and so that sometimes can tend not to be my favorite and their bronzers are usually a bit too warm for my personal preference. I prefer my bronzers to have a neutral to cool undertone and Hourglass usually makes their bronzers a little bit more warm so we'll have to see today if that changed. I feel like this bronzer looks more so neutral than it looks warm so, so far I'm excited. This is also a new shade and it's called Lunar Bronze. Let's go ahead and swatch it back here. And yes, yeah, see, this is not a warm bronzer. This is much more neutral than previous bronzers they've made. And it's also not too glowy. It has more so a natural finish to it. So I am much happier 
with this so far than things that they've released in the past. The next blush is this one right here and this one is called Diffused Heat. This is an already existing blush in their line and it's like a peachy pinky blush type color. And then last but not least, another finishing powder. This one is called Ethereal Light and it is the lightest of the two. And I'm going to swatch it right down here. So you can take a look right here at what the Jellyfish palette swatches like. The swatches, I think, showed up better than I expected. <laughs> and seeing that these blushes are not too shimmery, seeing that the bronzer has a nice natural finish to it as well, and that the highlighter is also not the ones that have glittery sparkles in there, I'm actually very excited to try this one. I feel like this has potential and that I might like it more than previous releases of theirs because like I said the bronzer was always a bit too warm and that throws me off so badly <laughs> so I'm excited to try this one on my face and see if I like it better but before we get there let's talk about the snake palette I definitely want to show you this one and swatch it for you of course also made in Italy 12 month shelf life Here's the outside box and let's get inside it. The Jellyfish palette, I should add, is the one catered to the lightest of complexions. The Leopard palette is the one in the middle, which would be light to medium complexions. I think that would probably have been the one that suits me best. However, it only had one new shade. And like I said, $90 for one new shade... I don't, I didn't, no, I couldn't do that. And then this one right here is the one for medium to dark complexions. I don't think it's like for deep complexions, but I think medium to dark can get away with using this one for sure. I was looking at Charlotte Holcroft's video on it. This is Charlotte right here for reference. She's got a medium complexion um, with warm undertones and she said she was using it very lightly because this palette is quite pigmented. So if you're even darker than Charlotte, you can still get away with using this palette. But like I said, I don't think that deep complexions can use it. I think it's probably more so medium to dark. Anyways, let's take off the little wrapping here. Here's what the outside packaging of the Snake palette looks like. And once you open it, take a look right here at what you see inside it. I think this one might be the darkest palette they've done so far. I do definitely want to swatch it side by side the Tiger palette from last year because the Tiger palette last year was the one that had the darkest shades and so I think it would be interesting to compare these two side by side and to see the differences between them. So we'll do that later. Sorry if I'm a little bit all over the place, I just don't wanna forget saying anything. I'll get to swatching that snake palette in a second, but the jellyfish palette, which I just swatched for you, is also a bit extra exciting for me because this year they made sure to put a bronzer shade in each palette and that to me is important. My biggest feedback last year on the Butterfly palette, which is this one right here, was that they didn't put a bronzer shade in there. Like, I don't know what they were thinking, but there was no bronzer shade in here. And I feel like one of the main most important things... Um, to do with these palettes is take them with you and travel with them because you're meant to have everything you need in a face palette, right? Yet last year they completely neglected the Butterfly palette when it came to bronzers and that was definitely a huge letdown for me. I think this one might have been my least favorite from last year. But this year they corrected that and every single one of the palettes has a bronzer, a finishing powder, at least two blushes and a highlighter and so I commend them for that thank you <laughs> anyways back to the snake palette let's go ahead and swatch it the snake palette is the one with the biggest amount of new shades five out of the six shades in the snake palette are brand new shades to the brand and the only one that is um, something that we've seen previously is the first one right here which is a finishing powder and it is in the shade Radiant Light. So the Radiant Light finishing powder is the only one we've already seen before. Take a look right here at what that looks like. Then we have Coral Haze right here, which is a new shade of blush. And this one has a really beautiful, like darker, peachier tone to it. This one here is called Infinite Strobe Light and it is like a highlighty shade. They call it a strobe powder. So take a look right here at what that looks like. As you can see, it's like a beautiful 
highlighter with a golden sheen to it. Moving on to Sunbeam down here, which is also a blush. And then Mystic Flush. Both of these are beautiful blushes. Here is Sunbeam, which is like this burnt orangey type blush color. And then this one is Mystic Flush, which is I think one of the darkest ones. It's like almost reddish. And last but certainly not least, the new bronzer. This one is called Solar Bronze. Take a look right down here. I am actually very pleasantly surprised at how non-orange, non-warm this is. It still has a beautiful neutral undertone to it, which once again, I certainly really, really appreciate. Take a look right here from a little bit further away. Actually, you can see the swatches and the color differences better. I had my hand a little bit too close to the camera at first. So jellyfish and snake palettes. I was saying that these palettes are actually much better shown on the face than swatched on the back of the hand. So let's get started trying on all of these shades. Now, I am going to try the snake palette even though it's not made for my complexion, just for the purposes of showing you. I also want to see if I can make it work for my skin. Like I said, I'm very happy that the bronzer is not too warm and so I wanna try it, I wanna try it. And then I'll take it all off and I'll play with the jellyfish palettes. This right here is a refer number 37 and this is the shade I want to use for the bronzer. I just dabbed twice in there, very, very lightly. Should I distribute? I'm distributing. <laughs> and then I am going to start buffing that bronzer in place so that it will hopefully not look a mess on me. Same thing over on this side. I'm going to grab one more dab. I am being super, super light-handed because I know that this is not meant for my pale ass. Moving on to the forehead next, just working it into my hairline. This is what happens when you forget you're playing with a pigmented color, okay? So, once again, let me see if I can buff that out. I think I can. These powders are very blendable and very forgiving, thank God. And so here's what that dark bronzer is very lightly blended, looking like on me. And I'm actually not mad, I actually, I actually like it. Let's do the jawline and buff and buff and buff. And the sides of my nose over here. That's not bad at all. I don't dare, I don't dare <laughs> build it any more than I have already. I was very light-handed for the most part, except like right up here. Um, but I think I was able to make it work. The blushes are probably going to be different, but um, I'm not mad at this. And one property that this bronzer I think has that is helpful when it comes to medium complexions and darker is that it has a slight reddish undertone to it. I didn't notice it when I swatched it, but I, f I see it on my face. Like it's not super, super cool toned ashy. It has a bit of red in there. And so I feel like that's going to be very helpful when it comes to the bronzer working on the people it was meant to work on. See, I was going to build it up a little bit more to see if I could, and now it's looking a bit muddy on me. So that's not the best idea. I should have let it be. The bronzer is blended. Let's move on to a blush. If by the end of this video, by the way, you're interested in grabbing any of these palettes, please do so using the link I'm leaving you down below in the description box. Whenever you shop for my links, it helps out my channel. I'm going to move on to blush. And this one, I just know I'm not going to love as much. So I think I'm going to focus on the two blushes in the middle. Let me grab Coral Haze again, light-handedly. This is a refer number five brush and I'm going to add it right here on my cheekbone and blend it forward and blend it into my hairline as well. So here's a very light hand of the color Coral Haze on my complexion. I'm going to turn my brush and on the other side, I'm going to grab this one. This one's a little bit more red, a little bit brighter. I'm not going to dab it off right here, I'm scared. <laughs> and this one here is Mystic Flush. So let me just add it on the top of my cheekbone, blend it into the bronzer, just like so. If I turn my face to the cameras and the light, it looks okay, but like right here, it looks like I have a rash. <laughs> it's a bit too red and a bit too dark for me. But you know, I just wanted to play with as many colors as possible and show you them on me. In fact, I think, why not? I'm going to also show you this one down here, which is the blush in the shade Sunbeam. 
which almost looks coppery. So take a look right there, see? That's what it would look like on my cheek. And Sunbeam is one of those formulas that is not my favorite when it comes to hourglass blush finishes because it almost has a metallic finish to it. And I just find that that enhances every line, every pore, everything you don't want enhanced on your face. You can see it through that formula. So I'm happy with the other two blush formulas that have more of a natural finish to them. But that like super shiny almost metallic finish that sunbeam has is definitely definitely not my favorite all right i took it off i still have a highlighter to try which is this one here the metallic strobe powder in infinite strobe light and this is a bk a 503 brush and i'm just going to add it to the top of my cheekbone right here this one is very golden so when i turn my face see it gives me a bit of a cast but like i said not for me right so take a look right there this would be a beautiful beautiful highlighter on someone with a medium to dark complexion for sure I'm just going to make myself even over on this side. Here are all of the new shades swatched on my face. And the only shade I have yet to try is this one here, which is the already existing one. This is the Finishing Powder in Radiant Light. This is a Wayne 02 brush. I'm just going to grab that Finishing Powder and I'm going to buff it all throughout my face. Same thing over here, just to like really mix all of the products together. And I'm taking it everywhere where I didn't apply product as well, just as a finisher on top of my foundation, even right here in the center of my forehead. Look at how beautifully that blended the highlighter on my face. I had not done that good of a job of blending my highlighter, but that finishing powder really just kind of mixed it all in. I saw Morgan Turner doing that on her review video and I remembered that's the way they taught us to do it when I worked at Sephora and for some reason I had forgotten somewhere along the way so take a look right there. I love the way that looks so so much and if you really want to you can definitely make the snake palette work even for lighter complexions. Is it going to be the most flattering on me? Probably not. I think the Jellyfish palette is probably going to be better, but very light-handedly, I was able to make this one work, I think. Um, so, I don't know, just something to keep in mind. Anyways, it is time to try the Jellyfish palette. I took everything off and my brushes are clean, so let's go ahead and go for it. Uh, first things first, the bronzer, which I am very excited about. Take a look right there and I'm going to buff it. I'm going to place it and I'm going to buff it up on my face. And with this one, I don't have to be light-handed, which I love. <laughs> I love not having to be careful. So take a look at what that bronzer looks like on my complexion. Definitely much more neutral than previous bronzers of Hourglass I've tried, which I, once again, I'm elated about. It's super exciting. A little bit right here on the sides of my nose and I'm moving on to the forehead. Just buffing and blending it into my hairline up here. Definitely happy with this bronzer so far. Take a look right here at what the bronzer alone looks like from the Jellyfish palette. I so far love it and this palette has two blushes and I have two cheeks I'm going to put one on each side picking up my refer number five once again and I'm going to start with the one at the top this one is the blush in the shade rose fusion and I'm going to just lightly tap it on top of my bronzer tapping it in place and blending it. And then with the other side of my brush, I'm picking up the peach here shade, which I think I'm going to like even better. This is the blush in the color Diffused Heat, which I'm not sure, but I think I already have this one. I'll check um, if it's in one of my previous palettes. This is for sure an already existing shade though. And I do like it better. I do prefer that peachier look rather than the more cool tone. But honestly, personal preference, I think they both look pretty good on me. The highlighter in this one is Opal Strobe Light and I'm excited to put this one on both my cheekbones because among... Uh, okay, I was excited about this one, but I feel like we definitely need to be a bit more light-handed with it. It is very, very, very light. It almost looks like I put some sort of like pearl something on my face. I don't feel like this is the most flattering on me. So I'm going to just 
use it very lightly over on this side. See, I think I was just too heavy handed. Why have that when I can have this, right? Like this looks much, much better. So let me see if I can buff this out with my blush brush. That's a little better, but still maybe a bit too intense for me. It was an application error. I underestimated it for sure. This is much better, much lighter, much more natural looking. <laughs> for my finishing powder, I want to go with this one up here, which is the darkest of the two. This one is super light. And this is the Diffused Light Powder, which I also already have in some other palette. But this one is amazing. This one is excellent. And so I'm going to buff this one all throughout my cheeks. I'm going to use it as a finishing powder on top of my foundation as well. Just to blend everything together nicely and make everything very ethereal looking, very blended. Let's see if this fixes my highlighter issue. That definitely made the highlighter look better, for sure. But still, I just should not have applied <laughs> that much highlighter. I'm going to switch to this powder down here just to try it out. I think it will probably work. And I'm going to blend it right in the middle of my forehead and into my bronzer. Yeah, it just goes on kind of translucent just with a beautiful natural sheen to it. So this one also definitely works for me, but I do prefer diffused light better. Let me show you what I mean about the bronzers and the undertones. This is my favorite palette from last year, which is the Elephant Palette, and I love it, but the bronzer runs a little bit too warm for me. Here is the Elephant Palette bronzer, which also has a bit of like sparkle thrown in there. Also not my favorite, I prefer a natural finish versus the Jellyfish Bronzer. Let's swatch that one right under here. See how this one has more of a neutral undertone. It's not as yellow, not as warm. It doesn't have any sparkles in it. This is definitely much more up my alley than the bronzer in the Elephant palette. And sometimes you have a face palette product that you love, like I love the Elephant palette from last year. However, overall, all of these powders up here were a little bit shinier and I felt like maybe in some lights it could enhance my texture and then the bronzer was a bit too warm for me. And so I feel like that's what made me, even though I love this one, reach for other things over it in my collection. However, I'm much more excited about the Jellyfish palette and I think this is a palette that I will continue to use and reach for because this is just much better for me in my opinion. Like I did go a little bit overboard with the highlighter, but the blushes work, the finishing powders are not too shiny, they work for me. And then the main thing, I'm a huge bronzer person and the bronzer is not too warm. It's definitely a huge win in my opinion. The butterfly palette from last year I loved except it didn't have a bronzer and I want to put it side by side the jellyfish palette in case you guys want to compare. The jellyfish one already immediately wins because it has a bronzer in there and I do like the finishing powders in the butterfly palette but the highlighter was a bit too sparkly, too yellow for me. So overall I think the Jellyfish palette is much better in comparison to this one. Now, when it comes to Jellyfish versus Elephant, I'm obsessed with the blush colors in the Elephant palette, but the finishing powders at the top are a bit too shiny for me. I like the more natural finish of the Jellyfish powders, and as I showed you, the bronzer was a bit too yellow for me. So in between these two, the Jellyfish one also wins for me. The last Hourglass Ambient Powder in my collection is this one here, which was my favorite up to this moment. And this is the Ambient Lighting Edit Universe. Now this one, I had the same issue with the bronzer where it was just a bit too shiny. Not as warm, but it does have that like shinier finish to it. See how it has that sparkle mixed in? That's what threw me off from this one. Other than that, this was my favorite palette that I had from Hourglass so far, but this one's like two years old. I think this palette is still available on their website. I think I looked it up recently. This one was amazing. I do love it. However, I do love the finishes of everything in the Jellyfish palette better because this one also had a finishing powder that had a bit more glow to it. 
The bronzer was a bit more glowy. The last two palettes I want to compare are the Snake Palette with the Tiger Palette from last year. So here are the bronzers. This is the bronzer from the Tiger Palette versus the bronzer from the Snake Palette. The Snake Palette's bronzer has a bit more glow to it and also a bit more of a warm undertone versus the bronzer in the Tiger Palette. These two are the blushes from the Tiger Palette from last year one very orangey one and then a pink one and then these here are the blushes from the snake palette this year which as you can see are pretty different when it comes to the darker blushes i honestly don't have much preference because the ones from last year's palette didn't work for me very well i guess i do have a preference the one from this year's palette worked for me better but i'm not the target market for the dark palettes anyway so my opinion shouldn't count right <laughs> The Tiger palette had two highlighters to choose from, which are these right here. And then the Snake palette from this year has one highlighter and it's more golden. I think it's kind of in between those two as far as the depth is concerned and this one is beautiful. And then I'm not sure if the finishing powders will show up, but this is the finishing powder from Tiger versus the finishing powder from the Snake palette. Here, okay, take a look right here from further away. The finishing powder from the Snake palette is warmer from the finishing powder from the Tiger palette. So I wanted to compare the specific formulas next to each other from the darker palette so that you guys can see the difference. Tiger bronzer versus snake bronzer. Tiger blushes versus snake blushes, these three. Two tiger highlighters versus snake highlighter. And then tiger finishing powder versus snake finishing powder. I think depth wise, they are very, very similar to one another. I don't think that the snake palette is deeper than the tiger palette from last year or vice versa. I think that they pretty much are both targeted for the same audience, which in my opinion is probably medium to dark complexions, not deep. I truly hope that those comparisons were somewhat helpful and I'm back to give you my final thoughts Overall, I think that this collection is an improvement from last year's collection and I was already happy with last year's collection But this one truly knocked it out of the park Especially when it comes to how thought out the color stories are I'm going to start with the snake palette back here last year's palette had two highlighters Which honestly didn't make that much sense to me and this year's palette I think has a much more cohesive color story They have one highlighter that is going to be universally flattering across medium to dark complexions that have three different color blushes you can choose from with two different finishes. You can go for the very shiny one that wasn't my favorite. In fact, you can probably also use that one as a highlighter or you can go for the ones with the more natural finish. This um, finishing powder I think is going to be fantastic as well for anyone with a medium to dark complexion. And the bronzer is also I think an improvement because they added a bit of a warmer undertone which I think is going to be best suited for tan to dark complexion. So I think this is definitely an improvement. If you're in that complexion category, I think you're going to be happy with the Snake Palette. And then I personally am very, very happy with the Jellyfish Palette and how this one is an improvement also over palettes that I've had in previous years. Now, this comes down to personal preference because I was watching my friend Charlotte Holcroft's video and she prefers the shinier formula. However, I have textured skin, it shows everything. I don't like the shinier formula because I don't want you to see my pores. And so I truly, truly appreciate that in this year's Jellyfish palette, they included formulas that are not the shiny ones. They included formulas that are the ones that have a more natural finish. These on my complexion truly make me look diffused and poreless and ethereal and natural. And so I definitely love that they didn't include anything with a lot of sparkle in this collection. The blushes have a natural finish. Thank you very much. The highlighter, I applied a bit too much at first, but I know that I can make it work. Plus it is a highlighter. It's expected to be sparkly, right? And then the two finishing powders, which I used both, are the ones that also have more of a natural finish. No sparkles in there. And the bronzer was definitely my favorite thing, the best thing for me, because there is 
no sparkles in the bronzer and it has a much more neutral finish than the one from last year's elephant palette which was a bit too warm for me and like i said even though the differences are minimal those are the little things that deter me personally from using a palette or from reaching for it all the time i know that if the elephant palette had had a bronzer that i liked best i would probably have gotten a lot more use out of it throughout the year so I am super hopeful and actually very excited to continue to use the Jellyfish palette. And if your makeup preferences sort of kind of align to mine, I do highly recommend that you get this one specifically because we're going to be looking ethereal together, okay? This looks fantastic. These palettes are available right now on the Hourglass website. Remember that you can customize the packaging versus the color story on there, but they will be also coming to Sephora and Ulta hopefully very soon. So I will definitely keep you posted on when it comes out at Sephora and Ulta over on my community page, so keep an eye out. If you guys like today's video, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next one. <laughs> Bye.